So um, if we have a function that looks like this, y equals a times b to the power of x, that is known as an exponential function. And it turns out that the graph of this function um, has a, at least a couple different looks to it. Um, one way that it could look is a little something like this. Um, if this is our x here and this is our y here, um, we could have a graph that kind of goes something like this. And uh, for that kind of graph, we call that exponential growth. And it turns out this function produces this graph. Uh, but it turns out we also have another type, uh, another look for the graph. Again, this is x and this is y. And it turns out that uh, the graph just as easily could go like this. And we have an entirely different name for this. This is called exponential decay. Now hopefully we can make sense of these terms, growth and decay. Um, just imagine that this, this x-axis was, was time and the y-axis was your money in the bank. Um, you can kind of see that as time goes on, it'd be nice if your money was growing, right? If it was going up. Um, and on the other hand, uh, if, if here the x-axis was time and y was money, um, this would be kind of a bummer because it looks like your money's going down over time. In other words, it's, it's decaying away. Um, by the way, um, it's a little bit like the word decay when it comes to like flesh, like with the zombies. Um, it turns out that that, uh, that you know when people die they start to decay and uh, it turns out an exponential decay graph kind of shows how they how their the, their bits and pieces kind of go away um, so anyways uh, how could this one function produce a graph that has growth and a graph that has decay well it turns out there's a this is the secret the secret is is that uh, here B is always going to be greater than 1 for, for exponential growth. And down here, b is always going to be some number between 0 and 1. And hopefully you recall this notation. Uh, this is a, a compound inequality, and it's an and compound inequality. Um, b is all the values in between 0 and 1. And um, so anyways, uh, this, this is kind of everything you ever wanted to know about exponential growth and decay. A uh, couple little extra things, though, while we're here. Uh, it turns out that the graph of exponential growth, it has an asymptote, and the asymptote is all along the x-axis. And I'm just drawing a squiggly red, red line to kind of show you where the asymptote is. And I'll remind you, how do we spell that word? Um, let's go ahead and get that down. An asymptote is simply a limit, and uh, it means that the, the, although this, this arrow indicates this purple line is going up forever and to the right forever, um, down here this arrow indicates that we'll go to the left forever, but this purple line will never get to the zero. And so, therefore, um, this leads us to an interesting conversation about domain and range for exponential functions. So let's get that in there. It turns out that uh, the domain for, for both of these uh, is uh, all real numbers, which is like yay, um, because if you recall, we've heard that phrase before when we worked with linear functions. Um, even when we look, looked at quadratic functions, we heard about the domain being all real numbers. But we did also run into some other functions where the domain was not all real numbers, like, for instance, rational functions and radical functions. The domain is not all real numbers. But for these guys, we're back to, just like with linear, the domain is all real numbers. In other words, the x values. Uh, remember, domain is x values. For these graphs, they go all the way to the right and all the way to the left. If we look at the dots 
you know, the individual dots that are on this graph, and we follow that arrow to the right and to the left, we will have a dot with a valid x value um, all the way to negative infinity and all the way to positive infinity for x. Um, of course, the trickiness comes in with range. It turns out that the range for this guy here, for the growth, um, it's only going to have y values that are greater than 0. And the range for decay is different. The range, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's not. It's the same. The range for decay is also only going to have y values that are greater than 0. So, um, so uh, even decay has an asymptote at y equals 0, or also known as the x-axis. And so therefore, the exponential decay function will also um, have y values that are greater than 0. So the range for both of these is y is greater than 0. And the domain for both of these is all real numbers.